Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes back Peter Tonkin. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you, man? It's um, Friday. It is Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. It's never been a oh, bad yeah. Friday. <laughs> no, none of them are too bad. Great to see you again. We just talked recently about pain and awesome yeah. new music there. And now we're covertly ahead of the game talking about hypocrisy. By the time this exactly. album comes out, the album will almost be out. But uh, I'm really excited. This album's killer. Uh, I, we, we talked recently, so I don't want to rehash the same things we discussed. But, yeah. you know, as always, hypocrisy is a completely different animal than any of your other work. Yeah. For sure. I mean, hypocrisy is hypocrisy, put it that way, you know? Uh, and it's it's a little different from from doing pain or Lindemann or something else, you know? Right on. And and worship is the record, and it is is such a heavy, brutal record. I know pain is the project that you have fun with and you take chances and yeah. risks you wouldn't norm, not normally take, but hypocrisy is and has been your baby, you know, it is really your, your labor of love. And uh, it's such a heavy record and such a good record for right now. There's so many albums coming out later this year, but, uh, you know, it just feels like everything that was uh, not coming out during the last couple of years, it's coming out right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. it's uh, so good to get this record, man. Oh, it's a beast. Thank you, man. Nobody wants to release an album during the, the p- pandemic because it kind of disappears. In, in the madness, I guess. Uh, for us, it was good to to wait. I mean, I was only waiting for inspiration, to be honest, you know. That's why it took eight years. And, uh, you know, you got to have a passion when you write something. Otherwise, it's going to stink. And I, I know it for a fact from doing a lot of albums. So I wanted it to feel like, yeah, let's fucking show the world, you know. And the spark was not there until 2017, 18 where I started slowly to, to write songs and uh, eventually jumping back to a tour or something like that. And then back home to settle down a little bit, try to write a little bit more and then out on another tour with some other band. So it was a lot of jumping back and forth, you know, it didn't take three years to write the album. It's just like, if you compress all these together, it's like a, a couple of months, I would say. Right on. And not to mention that you're very in demand and your production schedule is probably your calendar is full. So uh, no, not know. really. I don't produce anymore. I, I oh, okay. kind of stepped away from it a little bit. Uh, if, if I will produce, I mean, I think the last thing I produced was the Possessed album, to be honest, okay, yes. a few years ago. And uh, I just want to, when there's something special coming around, I, I will be open for it for sure. You know, but oh, it has yeah. to be something that makes you, you know, um, really uh, uh burn for it okay well i mean that's great and uh you know obviously your work speaks for itself um you know you have to have your heart in the game to be to yeah. be able to succeed yeah it's not really about it succeeding or not it, it's mainly more to be happy with yourself you know and uh, that's i am my biggest fan and my biggest critic you know when it comes to that so uh, to convince myself takes a lot of work <laughs> nice nice um you know it's it's definitely a grind and obviously making music is your real thing and it always has been so yeah man uh worship what a fun record and uh from the album cover down to the first and last note it is a lot of fun but it's also it's very serious it's very heavy um you know like you said it didn't take as long to write or make as it seems just just happened to be when 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 the time was right um is any of this material, this, this is all brand new material you wrote specifically for this album? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, Dead World, my son wrote when we were doing this uh, side project that me and him had together. We had some strange ideas that we were going to do a death metal album. So we wrote like 11 songs and demoed it uh, without vocals or any lyrics. And when we were done with that, we were like, yeah, let, let's do something else. <laughs> you know, so uh, I... I um, we had a, a dead world from that session. So I asked Sebastian if I can use it because he wrote the song. So uh, I asked him if I could use it and I'll write some cool lyrics for it. And uh, he was on it. So that's cool. I really love that song. It's a little bit different from hypocrisy, but it's still hypocrisy somehow, you know? Yeah, well, it's got the DNA, man. That's all it needs, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, could be. You know, seriously. But uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. We talked in the last interview about your son and how awesome that is that you get to work with your son. 
It was really great. Yeah. Yeah, definitely going out on tour with him and partying and yeah, not exactly doing the parenthood things, but you know, we enjoy in life. So there it is. Whenever, whenever it works, it works. You know, yeah. uh, kids don't always, you know, you're a child. You don't relate to your parents <laughs> till you're Fuck later no. to you understand yeah. them and they, and they, and they, you, you're not fully formed. They love yeah, you exactly. because you came from them, but you know, you came from their balls or wherever they're part, you know, dropped out of their vagina. But, um, yeah. you know, you didn't, you came from thin air, but you yeah. come a person later. And I think, you know, yeah. like, I think that's, that's a fun dynamic of children and their parents. Yeah. Well, we have a kind of close relationship, you know, I'm also a father. I can bitch him out on the tour. Like you wouldn't believe it, you know, but um, uh, mainly there's never anything to bitch about because he's a, he's a really cool guy. Always been. So uh, that's great. I mean, he wrote, he wrote with me, fortune, fortune of uh, soldiers of fortune, you know, on, on the uh, uh, end of disclosure. And he was what, 15 years then or 14, I think. And uh, yeah, he developed as a musician for sure. And a hell of a fucking drummer. No doubt. Uh, yeah. So good. And he came to play here as all of you did. Uh, so yeah, yeah, man, this is just a, it's just a good time to have another hypocrisy record. And uh, you know, again, we discussed already that this is just a, just an insane time. And uh, I'm hoping you guys can get back out on the road and, you know, later yeah. this year or early next year, is there a tour plans already formulating? Yeah, that? we're working, we're actually working on it. We, we had one set up for Europe in October, November, but we didn't even announce it because it was so fucked up the whole, the whole shit that was going on. We had that for a year booked and we're just sitting on it and waiting and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. And we said, okay, fuck it. Let's do it next year then. So, but we, we have something coming up in, in, um, uh, in spring in north america so that's going to be fun looking forward to that you know headline tour so uh, we're going to start booking the european tour as well of course summer is going to be a lot of festivals i still have a few uh, uh tours that i have to do with pain that was postponed from 2020 and 21 you know so i'll do that early during this year and then ready for the rest of the year with hypocrisy Awesome, awesome. We're looking forward to getting you back here, man. Uh, yeah, it's been definitely. a minute, and uh, we'd and we'd love to hear a whole career spanning set. I know whenever a band comes out with a new record, there's like, a, oh, we're gonna play some of this record, which is cool, and I always enjoy. Yeah, it. But, you know, people also want the old shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you you have to try. Now we got thirteen albums. That means like one song each. That's like one and a half hour right there. <laughs> I mean, our songs are, some of our songs are very long, like five, six minutes. It's not like with Pain where there are three and a half minutes. So you have to play 22 songs. That's like 115, you know, with, with Hypocrisy, if you play 22 songs, that's like three hours. So it's a little bit different there, you know, how it all is. But we'll definitely try to squeeze in from every song and try to do a little bit different, you know, not play the same that we've been doing for a couple of years. I mean... Over the past 30 years, of course, the uh, set list has been changing a lot, you know, as you buy, uh, you know, you write new songs and you skip old songs and take in other old songs. So it's, uh, we'll see what's going to happen next year, which songs we choose. So we're going to check out with the fans also what they want to hear. Nice. That was good to include the fans. Just out of curiosity, just because, you know, again, I, as we discussed, I, I feel like, you know, you, you can make music all the time, but obviously, like you said, you wanted to strike when the iron was hotter, when you felt inspired. I, I feel like as artists get older, it's harder for certain artists, not you, but certain artists to self-edit. Like, this isn't good enough anymore, or I wouldn't mm -hmm. put this on a record now. Do you yeah. have things that you maybe thought about for this record that you left off because it weren't up to your standard uh no i mean that that comes pretty early in the making of a song you feel like if it's not good enough or it, if it's if it does what it, you know if it kicks your ass you know because that's all all what, what it's all about it's for me to to give me a, a feeling like wow this is cool i want to keep on doing this if you don't have that then you probably scrap it right away but nowadays i i try not to uh i try to write to what what i want to hear you know that's all i can say everything that i i write for for the last 25 30 years has been what i think is cool what i like and of course you develop as a man and uh, as a musician and shit like that i could maybe not 
write things like from the two first albums because it's it was in that kind of vein I was thinking at that time. I'm talking about the riffs and stuff like that. But then again, I, I, I think, you know, if you really want to go backwards, I'm not sure about that. I, I really want to make us better. I don't want us to change styles or anything. I just want to create better hypocrisy songs. It sounds more hypocrisy than ever without being lame and stupid, you know? Makes a lot of sense to me. I think like the years of experience always filter into your work. So just whatever, yeah. all the records you made, all the records you worked on, whatever style, whatever genre, they just kind of, you know, filter in. Not they don't change what you do, but they help, right? They certainly help. Like I Yeah, I mean, I, I love, you know, in the 90s when I were recording a lot of bands and stuff like that, you know, they influenced me to write new songs as well. You know, everything you hear, even on the radio or, or, or podcasts or whatever, you know, Spotify, it just gets into my head and stays there. And it influenced me in one way or another. Everything I hear influenced me, even if I hate it or I love it or whatever. It's just the way it is. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm a jukebox. You know, you just stick it in and some shit comes out of it, you know, and that's how I see it. It's fun with music. It's not limited, you know. The creation is not limited. That's what I like. Nice. What have you been listening to lately that you love? And what have you been hearing that you don't love? <laughs> I don't know. I, I started listening to a lot of uh, Frank, uh, Frank Sinatra and shit like that again. And, you know, going back in time as in the 70s and shit. And, uh, of course, I, I listen to a lot of old stuff, you know, 50s, 60s. I, I listen to a lot of Beatles. Um, I can plow through four or five albums at the at the time every time I listen to it. Um, what I don't like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really have anything I hate. You know, it's just like if I am not into it, I just don't listen to it. So it's really hard to say what I don't like. Gotcha. Yeah, I find as I get older, I can only listen to the older Beatles stuff, the, the, the second half of their career. The early stuff doesn't sit with me anymore too well. It's catchy. It's great music. Uh, I, well made. I don't. Like I, I like it from Help album and up. Yep. Then, then something started to happen, I think. You know, it, for me, uh, the best Beatles times is maybe Revolver or... or uh, um, a magical mystery tour what's it called mm. uh, yeah you know with Alma walrus and all these crazy songs you know when they start doing drugs they start getting good right listen got kids better <laughs> kids don't do drugs don't do drugs unless you <laughs> want to make incredible music and yeah. in which case, no but i like i like the way you know how they they started with a, a plain field you know there was nothing there really i mean of course you had elvis you you had uh body holy you had uh, a a lot of stuff from the 50s you know but the way they started when they started getting really creative it just span out out of control and it became such amazing things you know through that what i like about them in retrospect is a lot of bands come out of the gate strong and then they get yeah. weak and they got better and better and better and they, they carried oh yeah it. they broke up and they individually got better and better and better if you think about yeah. it so uh i love that about them and very similar to today where i think that yeah. there's kind of a a combination of musicianship drive where people want to just get better and be better. I'm sure yeah. there was a period of time in your life where you were like, Oh, I ha I want to get better. I want to be a better guitarist. I want to sing better. I want to make better music. N not a guitarist, a drummer. Yeah. I, I uh, practiced a lot when I was a kid as a drummer, you know, I could go like over the weekend when you were out of school, you know, you can put in 15 hours, 20 hours playing, you know, uh, with the guitars. Fuck. No too lazy for that i only write lyrics and that's uh, i mean riffs and that's the only way how i keep up with my playing you know what you hear is what you get nice. I, I don't want to be a guitar hero i don't want to be of course with the picking you always want to be better you know faster and sharper and, and tighter but uh as technique and stuff goes with with the other hand i'm not interested life's too short for me you know and I admire all the fucking good musicians out there. Trust me, I really admire them. But it, it's not my cup of tea and sit and fuck around with it. You know, I, I will lose my mind. Right on. There's a whole beautiful world out there. 
Um, yeah. There's a time to woodshed for 15 hours and there's a time to get out there and live. Yeah, no, trust me. I really admire all these musicians that are, you know, tuned to the bone, you know, with everything they do. I really admire that. Word. I love it. Um, yeah, man, I only have a few more questions for you because I figured we just spoke and I don't want to retread everything we discussed. Already. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, man, you know, I think it's really cool how different hypocrisy and pain have evolved to be where again, yeah. pain could be anything. You started doing these covers and had yeah. a lot of fun and just the wild videos and hypocrisy has always been like a very serious a more serious band for more yeah serious band. definitely it is serious as fuck you know i mean listen to the lyrics man oh yes oh yeah i was gonna say um you know uh greedy bastards not only my favorite track so far on a few yeah. listens but uh children of the gray they will arrive i love alien shit so the cover also yeah. is like right you know it's a classic hypocrisy yeah. classic peter alien theme things and the, yeah, yeah. the underground man like you know if you're a, a headbanger you want that song. That's a great track. I hope you get to play it live. Yeah. It's about civilization that lives in Earth, in the honeycombs, you know? Mm. That's that's what that song is about. Word. Uh, have you been watching a lot of uh, Discovery Channel or science shows? <laughs> no, nah, I, I usually, I mean, I had my fair insurers in, in the 90s and 2000s and stuff. I, there's some people I listen to that I like that make sense, you know? There's a lot of people out there that are totally nonsense and stupid, you know? Usually they all want to push for their book that they just released and things like that. And, you know, when you try to push something, you, you'll do anything to sell. So there's a, a handful of people that I, I, I really like, though, you know. Word. Aside from music, uh, what else have you been keeping busy with or, you know, spending any of your free time on? I actually been fucking lazy over the one in the last half year. I, I've been. I just wanted to be, you know. When you just want to fucking be, that's all. And I, I got my house fixed and it, I love everything with that. And I just just want to fucking be, just stay and do nothing. So well, that's, that's what I've been doing. Man. That's a lot of self-care. We yeah, need, I think I, we I, all I, discovered that during the break. Yeah, I, I needed down. to recover a lot of shit. You know, the tour has been going nonstop. The, the have to do things, you know, you have to uh, write this, these songs, you have to make this album, you have to produce this, you have to do this and that. Now you have to go out on tour and, and things like that. It's just everything I've done the last six, seven years is you have to kind of thing. And I was just so sick and tired of it. That's why I took a time off as well, you know? Word. I see you got a guitar right next to you, of course. Do you just have oh, instruments oh. around the house? Yeah, I have to, you know, <laughs> just sitting there. It, I, it doesn't mean that I play on them, but, you know, at least I look at them when I, every time I walk by and go like, hmm, maybe I should try to do some riff. Nah, later. Right. And then What's I walk it? by again and I look at it. It's like, oh, fuck, I'm lazy. Right. Well, it's like a painter. You need inspiration around you. It's great yeah. to have these, you know, these, you know, these instruments are a miracle. Like they help yeah. us express ourselves. Right. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. That's man. how awesome. it is. Yeah, Peter talks. If the inspiration is there, is not there, it's gonna suck. Whatever you put up, you know. If you really your body's fully vibrating and you're, you know, like on the go, then good things will happen. Nice. I like that philosophy. That's very good. Um, mm. You know, you said before it is very important to you to to make to create when you're inspired to and not to when you're not. So it's good yeah. that you know yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I can sit for hours if I'm not inspired and nothing will come out. So I know that already after 30 some years of, of writing music. So it's better to let it come out when it comes out itself. Cause I might, I mean, in my head, I always write music first and then I put it down on, on guitars and then into the computer just to, uh, to keep it in there as a demo. And then I start working on things, you know. Right on word. We love so the if process. The, the head is empty, nothing will happen. <laughs> Word. That's some good advice to live on in general, not just for making music. Yeah, definitely. You got to be passionate on what you do. Otherwise, you're going to suck. Whether you like it or not, unfortunately, you know, it's not going to really be. Usually you can see right through it. You know, if someone is in the wrong position or in the wrong place at somewhere, you know. Or no, got to put it on a shirt or something, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> Peter, man. <laughs> 
it's been a pleasure. It's always great to see you and great to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, you too, man. And we look forward to seeing you here in America in 2022 with the new Hypocrisy album, Worship, coming in oh, November yeah. from Nuclear Blast. Thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank Ghost you, Talk. man. Have a great weekend. Thanks for your support, man.